Hi everyone, it's Laurel here, and I'm here to bring you a video for Simon Says Stamp. Heidi saw this card uh, with a pinwheel on it, and she sent me an email and asked if I would show you guys real quick how I made the pinwheel. So I'm absolutely humbled and honored to make this video for Simon Says Stamp. Uh, my good friend Shari Moss is the one that showed me how to make these paper pinwheels. I'm going to be using the Lawn Fun Bright Side Collection Kit. It's their new paper line. And it's important that you use double-sided paper for pinwheels because obviously both sides are going to be showing through. Now these two pinwheels I've made in the past are two different sizes. The smaller one is a two and a half inch square and the larger one is a three and a half inch square. Now on my card obviously I use the two and a half inch square but you could custom make these pinwheels to whatever size you want for whatever project you're working on. So to start with I'm going to show you the hole punch method. This is not my go-to method because this does take me a little bit longer um, but I'm going to show you this method first. So I'm taking a 1 8 hole punch and I'm just eyeballing the center of that square and I'm punching a hole. And then I'm going to take some scissors and at each corner I'm going to cut little slits towards the center but I'm going to leave some space from the end of the slit in the hole. I don't want to cut all the way to the hole. And then I'm going to take the hole punch and well, you have four sections there and on each section you need to punch a hole down at the bottom. Now it doesn't matter which side you do, which corner you do, but you do have to be consistent with all four corners. So I'm going to punch holes in the bottom right of all four of these sections. And just try to line it up as best you can uh, because if you punch off the, the page then you lose you know, your hole and it's hard to, you can't feed a brat or anything through it. So once you've got your hole punched, I'm just grabbing a brad from my stash, you just fold over those corners until you can get those holes to line up with each other. And then you just clasp the brad on the back and then there you've got your pinwheel. Now you can do a lot of things with the center of pinwheels. They can be buttons, they can be brads, you can put flower embellishments on it, um, you could you know, the sky's the limit with these pinwheels. You can customize them to whatever you want. Now I'm going to make a bigger one. It's a three and a half inch one. And this is the go-to method that I like. And this, this is kind of like a quicker way to do it for me. Um, so you're going to do the same thing. You're going to punch a hole in the center and you're going to cut your slits. And then I'm not going to use the hole punch anymore. I'm going to be using glue dots. And they're, um, the ones I'm using are half inch glue dots. And I'm just going to take a glue dot and I'm just going to adhere it straight to the center of that square right over that punched hole. And then I'm just going to take the corner and I'm just going to fold them into the glue. And this is going to hold that paper in place while you get whatever the center you want to use for your pinwheel. I'm going to use a button and I wanted some bling to the button and I tried to color it with Copics but it wasn't really working for me so I grabbed another button and I'm pretty sure I saw this technique over on Christina Werner's blog and she just dipped it in Versamark, so that's what I did, and then I just dumped it right into my embossing powder. It's silver embossing powder. It's going to go great with that um, chevron background from the paper, and then I'm going to heat set it, and you get this nice, nice, bright, shiny button. You can do glitter or whatever you want. And then I'm going to take some of the new hemp line that Lawn Fawn is carrying, and I'm just going to feed it through the button. Tie it in a knot cut off the excess pieces. Then I'm going to grab one more glue dot and I'm going to put it on the back of the button. That's going to keep that hemp in place and everything. And then I'm just going to put it right onto my pinwheel and that button is secure. It's not going anywhere. You can use glue dots, you can use glossy accents or whatever adhesive you have to keep whatever centerpiece you want to use for that pinwheel in place. So there you have it. You've got two techniques. The one to the right used the hole punch and the one to the left used the glue dots. I'm definitely a glue dots pinwheel kind of gal. So thank you guys so much for watching and thank you Simon Says Stamp for having me. Have a great day. Bye.